Hello everyone, this is ENG302, Unified Tracks, and our lesson will be about formal correspondence. Before we start, you need to prepare the following. Your course book, New Language Leader 3, your notebook, your stationery like a pen and a pencil, and your dictionary. The objectives of the lesson today, number one, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to review the features of formal and informal letters, I mean style and layout. We write together a formal letter applying for a job based on a given advertisement. Before we start uh, focusing on the main ideas and the layout of a formal correspondence, we should know what is a formal correspondence. Now, from the, from the word formal, I think it's familiar to you, but the word correspondence is a little bit ambiguous. But try to link it with the word formal. What do you think of the meaning of correspondence? When I say formal correspondence, correspondence means a letter, a formal letter, a business letter, or an official one. So, formal correspondence is, that is a letter that is written in official situation or to senior people. Here is a question for you. Classify the purposes of writing letters. So, you have six points or six pr uh, purposes and I want you to classify them into formal letters and informal letters. Let's read uh, the, the purposes for you. Let's read it together and then I'll give you time to classify. Stating experience or experiences at work, inviting a friend to your birthday party, asking for information about a job vacancy, a job opening, complaining about product, asking a friend or your friend for a favor and applying for a job. So I'll give you two minutes, think about them, and then I want you to classify the uh, purposes.
Yes, now we'll check your answers together. So stating experience or experiences at work, from the word work, you know that this purpose is related to formal letters. Complaining about product, it's formal. Asking for information about a job vacancy, as we said before, job opening, it's related to formal letters. And sure, applying for a job is formal. Uh, informal letters, inviting a friend to your birthday party. So from the word party, you can figure out it's informal. Asking your friend again for a favor, formal. Now we have another question. Choose the correct writing style for each type of writing, either formal or informal. So avoid contractions like I'm. What do you think from the example I'm? Is it formal or informal? Contractions. When I avoid contractions, this is formal. Yeah, let's check the second one. Use phrasal verbs like call back. What do you think? Yeah, informal. Longer words instead of shorter. For example, information instead of facts. What do you think? From the first two words, longer words. Yeah, so this is formal. Last one, abbreviations like thanks, by the way, this is informal. So these are the writing style for both formal and informal. Okay, this is another question related to expressions. Uh, complete the expressions below with words from the box. So you have a list of words in a box and you have five sentences. I want you to choose the word that is suitable to fill in the sentence. Let's read it together. Read the, um, let's read the sentences. I look to hearing from you in the near. So you have to choose two words. Number two, I am with to your advertisement. Please find a copy of my CV. Number four, I can be on the above phone number at any time. Five, in fact, I have as an administrative assistant at a bank for the past five years. So if you can notice or if you figure out that these sentences are related to formal letters, so I want you to think, read the sentences again carefully and choose the correct words. I'll give you two minutes and then we'll discuss together. Okay, now I suppose you write the answers in your notebooks. We'll start with the first one. I look forward to hearing from you in the near future. So this is a fixed expression that all of you uh, memorize and write in every formal letter, right? Number two, I'm writing with reference to your advertisement. Number three, please find enclosed a copy of my CV. Four, I can be con contacted on the above phone number at any time. Five, in fact, I have worked as an administrative assistant at a bank for the, for the past five years. Okay, now let's think about the, these expressions and link them to the layout itself. Where can I find the first sentence? Do you think I can write it in the introduction or in the body? Number two, I'm writing with reference to your advertisement. Can I write this sentence in the conclusion, for example? Yeah? Uh, 
Number three, please find and close the copy of my CV. Can I write it in the conclusion? Think about the, the layout and the expressions. Where can I write each expression in the letter itself? So I'll give you just three seconds. Think. Okay. So the sentence number one will be found in the conclusion. So you end your letter using this sentence. While number two, I'm writing with reference to your advertisement is always in the introduction. So you write your reason for writing in the introduction. Please find enclosed a copy of my CV as in the in introduction. I can be contacted on the above phone number at any time. This is, uh, will be written in the conclusion. Last, last sentence is in the body. So you, you talk about or you explain uh, or express your experience in the body. Okay, now let's focus on the layout of a formal letter. And then I'll give you a sample, a writing sample. So imagine that this is a letter. You start by writing your address and the date on the top right of your letter, and then the company's address plus the greeting. Now we'll focus on the greeting, and we should know how can I write a correct formal greeting. Okay, then the introduction. So I have to refer to the purpose of writing. Why am I interested to get the job? So reason for, um, for being interested to get the job. The body. So you write your qualifications, certificates, and work experiences, plus your personal qualities. Conclusion. In the conclusion, you should refer to the closing remarks, signing off, signature, and your name. As I said before, in the greeting, you should write a formal greeting. For example, dear sir or madam. If you don't know the person that you are writing for, you should write either dear sir or dear madam if you know the gender of the, of the person, or you can write dear sir or madam um, in the letter. Here is another example. If you know the name of the person you're writing for, you should write dear Mr. or Mrs. Miss, Ms. or Doctor, for example, plus the full name. So for an example, dear Ms. Maryam Adnan Ahmed or dear Dr. Adnan Ahmed. In the introduction, you should refer to the purpose of writing as well, as we said before, which contains the main message. For example, I'm writing this letter in connection with your advertisement in Instagram to apply for the position of a teacher. So the purpose of writing should be written in the beginning of the sentence or the letter to show the employer the purpose of writing the email or the letter. Point number two, why am I interested to get the job? For example, I'm interested in this job because you offer higher chances of personal and professional growth or I'm, I'm interested in this job because of the reputation of your, of your company or your bank or I'm interested in this job because I have always dreamt to work in an educational sector. Qualifications and certificates, practical skills, and working experiences uh, is shown in the body. For example, okay, 
Regarding the body, as you can see here, you have to write your qualifications, certificates, practical skills, and work experience or experiences. For example, I have a diploma in teaching, if you are applying for a, a teacher job. In fact, I have worked as an administrative assistant at a bank for the past five years. I have computer and communication skills as well. Okay, let's have a look at the sentences. Do you think that I have a diploma in teaching refers to the practical skills? Or does this sentence, in fact, I have worked as an administrative assistant, related to work experiences? I have computer and communication skills as well. Can I consider it as a certificate? Okay, just think about the ideas here and link them with the concepts above. So I have a diploma in teaching. This is related to qualifications and certificates. In fact, I have worked as an administrative assistant at a bank for the, fast, the, for the past five years is related to work experience. I have computer and communication skills as well. This is related to practical skills. Number four, personal qualities. This is related to the body as well. You have to refer to a group or a set of personality uh, adjectives. For example, well-organized, patient, fast learner, hard worker, flexible, I can work for a long period of time or I can work under pressure. So you have to choose a number of uh, adjectives to express your personality. In the conclusion, so we reach the stage of the signing off in the conclusion. If you have started your letter by, for example, dear Mrs. Fatma, and your letter by yours sincerely. If you start your letter by uh, dear sir or madam, you have to end it with yours faithfully. Then you have to sign, write your name, and refer to your contact information. For example, here is a signature, Ms. Maryam Adnan Ahmed, telephone number and her email. Here is a writing sample. So we'll go through it and we'll cl clarify every ambiguous point. So as I said, the, the address, your address and the date will be on the top right of your letter. For example, house 2121, Manama Bahrain and the date 21st of March 2020. The company's address, Assalam Secondary School, Manama Bahrain. Greeting, dear Ms. Maryam Adnan Ahmed. In the introduction, purpose of writing. So I'm writing this letter with reference to your advertisement in Instagram to apply for the position or the job of a teacher. Why am I interested to get the job? I'm interested in this job because I have always dreamt to work in an educational sector. Regarding the body, you have two parts. Part number one, certificates, qualifications, practical skills and work experiences. Part two, personal qualities. In part one, you can start with, for example, I have a bachelor in math. In fact, I have worked as an assistant teacher at a school for the past five years. Actually, I have learned several things like being patient and punctual. My role is to provide support for the teacher I was working with and my colleagues as well. That is why I think I'm good I'm a good match for this job. I have computer and communication skills as well. For the personal qualities, you can start with um, I am well organized and patient. 
I am also a fast learner. I can work for a long period of time and under pressure. Conclusion, you have four parts. Part number one, closing remarks. As we said before, you can refer to this, for example, sentence. I look forward to hearing from you. Signing off, yours sincerely, because you start your, you start your letter by referring to a name. And then your signature and your name. Here is a writing question and an advertisement that you can take, for example, or depend on in your writing. Uh, write a letter of application based on the advertisement applying for this job. Your name is Noor Ali. Let's have a look and read the advertisement. Part-time job, do you want to earn some extra money? Do you speak another language? Are you confident and easygoing? And we need French, German and Spanish speakers to work for us in the City Museum shop from Tuesday to Thursday. Send your application letters to, uh, to citymuseum at bh.com or dot, uh, dot com, yeah. Okay, so here is the advertisement. Please, I want you to follow the given layout and use the expressions, formal expressions, to, to write your application letter. Thank you very much. Hope the lesson was clear to you.